welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Seven String Multiscale Land, everybody's favorite theme park. On this week's video, we are taking a look at this absolute blood-soaked weapon of evilness. This is the Schecter C7 Blood Moon Multiscale. I've been on the hunt for a new seven string, something that I can use as a stage guitar, something I can use for music videos, live performances, when COVID stops destroying everyone's lives. And this is the latest candidate for that job. So let's see how it stacks up. Disclosure time. I've purchased this guitar with my own money at full retail price. Nobody has asked me to do this review. These are my unbiased, unfiltered opinions on it. Specs wise, this thing ticks all the boxes. This is a 25 and a half to 27 inch multi-scale. I find anything over an inch and a half fan is just a bit too much. Those of you who are considering trying a multi-scale, the best advice I can give to you is just pick the damn thing up, don't think about it. Now, anything over an inch and a half fan, I found kind of prohibits your brain from switching off to the fact that the frets are not at the usual angle you'd expect them to be. We got some really nice uh, appointments on this guitar. We have a graphite nut, excellent material for a nut. Uh, we have Schecter branded locking machine heads. Um, there are big beefy things, like the, the knobs on them are, are really like thick knurled metal. They feel like really well built, you know, really robust. You have uh, some nice matching carbon fiber back plate and uh, truss rod covers. You've got far too many knobs for a metal guitar, in my opinion. But anyway, you have two master volumes, one for the bridge, one for the neck. You have a master tone, which is also a push-pull for coil split tones. And you have my favorite type of switch, which is a three-way blade switch. Super reliable, super comfortable to use, far better than a toggle switch, in my opinion. Now, the pickups in this guitar, you would think for the price, which is currently about 12, 1300 quid in the UK, uh, you would think for the price that they would be aftermarket pickups such as Fishman, EMG, Seymour Duncan, the usual suspects. However, what we have in this guitar is a set of Schecter USA made Sonic Seducer pickups. <laughs> That's a great name. Um, now, believe it or not, Schecter actually has uh, a huge lineage in making pickups. I actually think that they produce pickups actually before they even produce guitars. We got some super shiny stainless steel frets that have been polished to oblivion and are super blingy and look great. I've definitely found that with Schecter instruments, stainless steel frets on them are just really shiny. Um, you know, I've bought guitars in the past where I couldn't really tell what they were made out of the frets because they were stainless steel, but they were quite dull stainless steel, which doesn't stop them from doing their job. It's just an aesthetic thing. Anyway, the frets on this look fantastic. You've got some really nice uh, perloid inlays that are a bit different. They're kind of like dashes. And then we have this crazy blood moon finish, which is so kind of intricately done. I would guess that it's something like hydro dipping would be the way they've done it. Um, hydro dipping, like it's used on like uh, alloy wheels on sports cars and, and all sorts of stuff. Like I can't think that you know, this has been painted by somebody because it is just, I don't know, it's so intricate, it's just so well done. It, it looks fantastic, the, the finish on this guitar. You know, they do uh, a silver version of it and they also do an even more wild toxic green <laughs> if you really want to like uh, blow people's heads off uh, visually. It's actually more subtle than uh, some other kind of splat finish guitars I've seen. In, uh, in dark environments, this kind of almost just looks like a really dark red guitar and uh, it, it doesn't immediately jump out to you as something with like a really intricate splatter-like pattern on it. Um, it's quite classy, dare I say. Now, Lumen Lays on this guitar are the best kind. For those of you who don't know, all Lumen Lays are not created equal. There's different sizes, there's different brightnesses, there's different colors. You even have manufacturers such as Ibanez who have their own brand, uh, Luminescent Side Dots, I think Ibanez call theirs. Now, these ones on here are the big, bright ones, and uh, they work really well if you charge them up with a UV torch or the official um, Luminlay little kind of pen light thing. Uh, that's a great addition, too. Not something that you always see at this price point, actually, as well. 
Now take a listen to these pickups because they are very unique. They do not sound like your average, like active metal pickup, for example. They are super honky, <laughs> like really honky. Um, the best comparison I can give you is they sound very similar to the Seymour Duncan Nazgul and Sentient set in that you have an extremely honky bridge pickup with a shit ton of mid-range honk and then you have a very, very bright neck pickup uh, that's very, very crisp, lots of high mids in there. I forgot to say, we're using the official Driftwood Kemper profiles as well, which sound disgusting. You could just hang out all day on the low A string, fifth fret or below. <laughs> that's, that's where these pickups just want you to just hang out. <laughs> The cleans are actually lush, <laughs> really nice. <laughs> These are just so honky, which helps tremendously with definition in low tunings. I always play in drop A, 
uh, with the top three strings tuned G flat BB on all my seven strings. So note clarity, note definition is, is super important. And I find with this guitar, the mid-range honk helps so much with any riffs you're playing kind of below the fifth fret on the bottom couple of strings. Um, you know, the frequencies of, of the notes just pokes through just so much better. But for you kind of gent guys out there who are in crazy low drop tunings and doing a lot of riffage below the fifth fret, this thing, is, I reckon it's going to be right up your street, these pickups. Build quality wise, uh, I will be totally straight with you guys and tell you up front that this guitar has actually been a massive disappointment to me, build quality wise. Um, now this thing has an October 2020 serial number. Uh, it's produced in the Korean Schecter factory, which I believe is WMI, World Musical Instruments. Now, some of the finest instruments I have played, mass produced instruments have come from Korea. Um, I've got a Legata, two Legatas back there, and another Schecter that are phenomenally well built. Which, all the more then, um, caused me to be surprised when uh, you know I pulled this thing out of the box and straight away the nut caught my eye. Now all the, the seven deadly sins, if you like, of, an, of a nut are on this guitar. <laughs> so uh, on the treble side, the nut is set in like miles. It's nowhere near flush with the neck. On the bass side, not only does it stick out, there's a gap between the fretboard and the nut easily big enough to get a guitar pick in. Um, and also there is just shit loads of glue residue visible, uh, both behind and on the sides of the nut, which is crazy, I, perplexing to me. You know, the box of this guitar came with a Schecter QC sticker on it. And um, I have personally, my experience has been that Schecter stuff is incredibly well built. Um, I've never seen a bad one, even a, even the cheap stuff I've seen has been excellent. So the fact that um, the nut on this guitar has left the factory in that state and then passed QC is like crazy to me, considering the price of this instrument. The other big build quality problem with this guitar is that the 17th fret is poking out and is sitting higher than all the rest of the frets, which means anytime you're playing a note kind of two frets down, the string is just buzzing out on it. Now, uh, you know, uh, it may be a case that that fret needs to come out, needs to be re-slotted. You know, you might be able to take a hammer to it, get it in, but I'm certainly not gonna get into doing that and risk damaging the guitar when I could just send it back and get a refund, which is what I'm gonna be doing with this guitar. It really is um, confusing and an enigma because my experience and, and the experience of friends I have who have bought Schecter guitars has just been fantastic, man. They've always been really well built, really well QC'd, and uh, that fret problem, the unbelievably shoddy job on the nut, um, God knows. Now, the build quality issues aside, assuming they weren't there, I would recommend this instrument. The pickups sound super unique, not totally to my taste, but I can see how they would go down really well, especially if you're a fan of the Seymour Duncan Nazgul and Sentient set because they're so, so honky. My advice to you, if you're thinking of getting one of these, just make sure you buy it from somewhere with a good returns policy just in case. That's the end of this in-depth review on the Schecter C7 Blood Moon. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I think you're going to enjoy all the other videos on my channel, so take a look. Think about chucking me a subscribe because it encourages me and it helps me to make more videos like this. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time.